I know we have a lot of questions from the Slack channel. I uh, thought, though, as I went to gather those uh, a bit more and sort of figure out how we might present them, I, I want to start with just one sort of topic which sticks out to me when I when I see your presentations is what after we talk about this topic of diversification, what finally do we think relevance means? And is relevance something that's at odds with diversification of search results? Uh, is it the foundation for it? Um, should we completely throw out our DCG and NDCG metrics and just focus more on random search results? Like, I'd be curious what you guys think. And I'll, uh, Lev, why don't you kick us off just sort of a, with your thoughts on that? Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, well, I, I think that Relevance is well a technical term actually. Uh, when when we see well, I always uh, try and uh, recommend to see a user in front of you. So uh, nobody is interested in in having a lot of highlighted words in the title of the product. Uh, they need something something else. So if we can switch from talking about relevance to talking about the probability of this precise article to be useful or to be bought by this precise um, uh, this precise user um, it, it can be more more fruitful and more useful of course relevance and the text relevance it's it's just a, a simple approximation to that so well in many in many cases the more words and the more words and the title we meet from the user query, uh, the the more uh, the closer connection to what he meant uh, there is, but uh, it's it's not um, it's not the primary source. And what we get from the the data from all the slogs um, may be much more precious because well, this user slogs uh, is just recorded journeys and recorded. Uh, attempts of overcoming this unsatisfaction and these difficulties that users face uh, during the navigation and yeah, searching. And what we can do, we can like shortcut, we can try to analyze it to understand what they really wanted to find. Maybe even, even in the cases where the users themselves don't, don't uh, know exactly what they want and to, uh, to provide the shortcuts. Uh, well, it, speaking about the evaluation uh, with the, the uh, diversification and its comparison to uh, known standard metrics like NDCG or PFound, uh, we, if we simply uh, think that there is one dimension that we want to diversify, uh, we should take into account that uh, each place uh, marks and will, to fill each place in search result page, we should decide whether uh, this need for intent was already filled and the user needs some additional product for a given intent or if it's time for him or her to suggest something new. And this can be calculated maybe, uh, Andres and Felipe can even evaluate it or proceed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go ahead, Andres. Yeah. Uh, well. Okay. Um, well, I, I have to I have to tell you one thing. So before um, I, I really looked in, into this diversification topic, I was always um, um, the, yeah convinced that with the data we have, we can um, really model the behavior of the users we see out there, and 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 and, and we we can serve what they want. However, especially for broad queries or inspirational queries, when I looked into the data, there was always this big gap between relevancy judgments, even with click data, and, and then subject matter experts that said, yeah, but all of these are bikes. Yeah, I know. But I mean, if I go into a, a shop or even if, if you ask me, um, you want to buy a bike, the first question I ask you is, yeah, what kind of bike? So what is the purpose of this bike? And, and, and right now, we, we cannot really do this. Um, of course, we have facets, 
but still with the facets not not everything may be grouped together in in a, in a nice way uh, an enduro bike might be a hybrid of different things so i think we if, if we want to um, put um, this in a natural context then we need to um, have an exploration phase so we need to find out um, and and that's i think is the main goal of diversification it's not about um, directly optimizing the relevancy it's about um, getting more information and, and and really try to understand and, and make it happen that we can understand what the user is actually looking for maybe we're always serving the wrong the, the wrong answer who knows I, it's still it it gets uh, it gets uh, bought uh, but maybe it could we, we could have a, a 10 times higher conversion rate who knows yeah, yeah, my thoughts on that are, are aligned with you, you guys. Like, uh, I also was surprised. Like, before I start, start, started playing with diversification, I was surprised how, how many times some maybe tests that I have, like, clearly something that's less, le less relevant. I want right, to perform it better. I could understand why. And then when I when I start to research about this, I, it's clear, like, uh, as you guys said, user needs options, like, relevance as is the for, for uh, the, the initial quest like it's nothing without intent or without a context and as the moment you start to driven uh, to go in this intent or context you see that it's different users have different needs so diversification can help you to scale out that also another thing that opened my my eyes is like uh in terms of like when you have relevance the traditional relevance we look at the the query and then look at the similarities of the document uh, against that query but diverse uh, when you start playing with diversity you see that's like actually used you have to look at the diverse the, the, the similarities between the documents you know not only against the query and that's then when it starts understanding what you how you can like change your result sets to be more successful yeah this is uh those are good thoughts i think related to that um i think lev you you called this out in your slide deck is the idea of uh, that you see in maybe reinforcement learning discussions of exploit versus explorer. And uh, I wonder I wonder what you guys think, like is there a spectrum there of times we know, okay, the, the searcher wants a blue bike with this size wheels and that kind of thing. Uh, and we are, we feel confident uh, in the sort of the relevance and it's more a direct ranking or other times where the, the the query is rather broad and or ambiguous, and it's um, there's an exploration, and if we're ever really 100% on one dimension or the other, it's somewhere in between. Well, may may I, may I begin also? Well, because well, with with this with this topic, uh, also I think it's it's a good analogy. It's a good case to to imagine that you are in a brick and mortar store with a good an attentive consultant and you came to him or to her and uh, say that you want a blue mountain bike and then she she answers that uh, Doug look there are a couple of blue mountain bikes but is blue color is really that important because well I have some other mountain bikes that are uh, um, red or orange or black but they are more, I don't know, cheaper, more efficient, they look fancier and so on. And this sort of behavior, this sort of uh, interaction, because well, I, I, uh, I want again stress that it's about communication and this understanding is important. If we understand, if we can give this feedback that we got what you wanted, we understood what you told us, and we not only understood what you told us and asked us, but we may uh, suggest what you really need, and if we can distinguish between that, not just uh, consider or behave with you as a, as a dumb person, and, well, I, I'll, I'll uh, show three times one item that I want to, when I want to sell, and please uh, shut up and take it. Uh, if it will be, it can be a respectful and understanding communication, then uh, there is a broad, well, range of uh, possibilities and to use the data also. And if you, if you look, uh, let's say, if you map these kind of queries, so the, 
these inspirational queries and broad queries on the on, on the long tail graph. What you directly see normally is that we are in the short head. So essentially, this is the perfect place to do machine learning because you are not handling sparse data. You normally, with every kind of experiment you do, you, you can be quite sure that you have enough samples. And let's say I haven't covered that in my talk, but I wouldn't just put these kind of row-based um, approach as, let's say, a fixed rule. You could do th things like put a bandit in front of it and say, A, um, try to play these different approaches. And, and maybe the bandit comes even up with, yeah, these don't work at all. So put the initial search result on top and these, these, these recommended um, groupings um, um, at the bottom. You never know. But now you have, you have a way of doing that. Imagine how you would do this on a, if you just have one single result and a single dimension um, to, to sort on. That's, I don't even know how this might be possible without pinning it manually uh, on positions. <laughs> I uh, yeah I like this uh, analogy of having this spectrum so like one 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 side to have this like exploit totally exploit it would be like uh, personalization let's say uh, it's very personalized to you know exactly what the user does and then you have the other extreme it can be like uh, recommendations of fresh items without a query without open query and I think uh, these are the extremes of diversity right. And I think as you, as you mentioned, uh, there's like, uh, you could like maybe have a bandit to transition this spectrum, right? But like, uh, what, what, what my point is that like, uh, we want you that sweet spot that you maybe you do, don't, don't do that, but you need some interactions to, to kind of feed those bands or also even the machine learning models. And I think also uh, in this case, diversification also plays a role this. Like, uh, I don't have exper experience like in this on search direct, but for example, maybe diversifying uh, recommendations can help you to fill the collaborative filtering model, a uh, recommender. So can help you to kind of at least tailor a little bit like some fresh uh, search based fresh items recommender. So, and then this is like you feed those uh, recommendations with diversification as well. Uh, I think this is like, with, we have to explore this uh, spectrum pretty much. And I mean, we, we, we already have uh, coped the, the topic of, um, yeah, how, how broad a query might be in, 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 in terms of looking at the distributions on, 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 on different metadata. But there is another thing you should have in mind. I mean, the, the pure result size sometimes uh, can be a good sign as well. I mean, if I have thousands of T-shirts in the result, um, the chances, chances might be good that from these thousand t-shirts I'm selling, um, uh, I'm, I, I only sell hundred and all of the, all the other 900 will never be seen. Um, and, um, this kind of diversification helps you to give them a spot at least a couple of times. And maybe it's the next bis, uh, a big thing. Yeah. You, you never know. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's how retail is about. I'd be curious if you guys, um, just to close out this specific topic, um, it sounds like what you guys are saying is that I think sometimes we can take a uh, information retrieval competition like a Trek or a Kaggle competition and see that there is clearly a set of ground truths, a corpus, and we optimize for some ground truth. And perhaps many of us got into this field with that perspective. Uh, would you say that the, maybe this is a leading question, but would you say the realities of a search product, a real search product are, are quite more complicated and maybe involve multiple perspectives of optimization that are around along multiple dimensions? Yeah, we, we definitely tend to oversimplify things when we model uh, stuff. So to model the reality um, is, is really hard and um, it, it will maybe take 10 years or even longer um, uh, until we are really able to understand uh, how people shop uh, things um, online and how we can get the maximum out of it. But uh, at least 
from, from my point of view, without exploration, um, I, I think we will be locked soon because then um, all the top sellers will almost, uh, almost be the same on every marketplace. Uh, so you will have to, to, to buy all the traffic to get on your side because you're the cheapest and that's not a, a good place to be in. You need to diversify your business as well. Um, so yeah, you need to find ways um, to, to spot the differences in, um, for a query or for a category page um, for different audiences and, and, and meanings. I'm 100% sure. Yeah, I think this is the secret for having a health ecosystem and for marketplaces in general. Because like, uh, as if you don't have like have sellers that you don't guarantee like demand, like search clicks for those sellers, what's the point of the sellers in marketplaces? It's bad for the seller, bad for the marketplace, and potentially bad for the user as well. So I think uh, the, the, the key of like this diversification, especially on landing page, I think is very important to promote uh, new sellers or not necessarily new sellers, but uh, new stuff. Something that's not like uh, purely defined by algorithms. Maybe seasonal stuff, like breaking the cycle of uh, be only trust in, in relevance. I agree. Uh, well, I, I, I would all only add that it's like with this uh, diversity problem, it's like before we just left with text relevance and it was okay. And then we uh, started to use some behavior signals and added some new information and so uh, now we are talking then it was about personalization so we realized that it's worth showing uh, for the same query for different users if we know something about them some different results and now we're, we're just trying not 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 only we uh, uh, to add some new information about this intent or uh, these dimensions of uh, that should be diversified, and there is no conflict with the relevance because well we can simply think that uh, this old relevance it remains, but we add uh, this new dimension so we we can um, we can judge the results by relevance, but for the query and for one chosen intent, and then there is another task. Uh, maybe a bit more complicated how to fill in all the places on the search result page because well we not only take into consideration the relevance in the condition that this precise intent was met but also this probability of this intent uh, being being meant so well of course it's all it's all about approximation and simplification but uh, we we are getting uh, deeper and deeper uh, and it's getting more complicated and it's it's fun yeah maybe the, uh, it's a blender right like it's like as you define uh in andreas like uh, we maybe don't want to like to be in the core of like our models or the ranking algorithms but it's a layer of a rank that we don't want to like mess up with like face it uh it's just a blender like it's something that's come of recommendation maybe that's the second layer of a rank that you need at top of search results yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the, the only thing I potentially would like to add is um, I think that we modeled relevance uh, in the typical way called the quantitative measurement just in uh, on a single dimension. And essentially, um, it all of these uh, re uh, results might be relevant for us and maybe for, for others as well. But what, what is really important is um, re relevance in context. So for this particular loser, user at that particular time, coming from maybe this side, relevance might be something different than uh, judge, judges that ju just judge uh, 10,000s of, 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 of products or, or result list. I think that's the thing. We just cannot generalize it. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so there's one question from Matteo Catina. Hopefully I'm getting that name right. Uh, how do you represent relevance judgments for diversification? Or what you guys think? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there you can still use the same stuff as before. So, uh, I mean, how we are currently, I mean, COVID uh, took us the chance to, to already present some numbers because we initially planned to have this live together with the customer. So I don't have it yet, but at, at least I can tell you how the way how we approach it right now and want to do it. 
So um, we would still have relevancy uh, judgments. Um, and, and these uh, judgments will, would apply on the initial result set. But on top of that, if we see that, um, let's say, um, the actual usage of the products that we show them um, is, 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 is not on a sweet spot, let's say, always on the top. So it's, it's everywhere on the result, even after refining the result, then this is a clear uh, signal for us that we might want to um, diversify it. And, and there you can just use uh, the, the, your typical user signals as well, like click-through rates, um, uh, add to cards, and buys, and all these things. And, and, and what you essentially do is you have a, 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 a second layer ranking um, that just tries to optimize um, 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 a, a ranked set for this um, particular context. This is how, how I see it. I don't know if it, if it plays out well, but it's the only way I can imagine how to solve the, the issues I see with the data. I mean, it's, it's obvious. Uh, in this field of like, uh, I don't know as well the answer, uh, but one thing that come, come to, to my mind is that uh, I can see maybe with human uh, gem, uh, manual judgments, like uh, what if like for a query, we try to collect the judgments for a persona or assuming an intent. Of course, you need a, a, a lot of knowledge, domain knowledge for this. But let's assume that you can like collect uh, the interpretation of uh, like an you know, iPhone for different things, and then you have different judgment lists, right? You run like uh, you, you optimize for each of this query plus intent, so in this nicer dimension that put your query, right? And then you have the best rank for each query plus intent. The question is now is the blend you have your final result set and you can blend all this, you can interleave basically all these three judgment lists. And then you, your, your model has to maximize the, the NCG or I don't know, any other metric of this interleave it uh, final result set. Because if they assume that you have to put everything in the same scale, uh, and then you're gonna have a result set. I agree that like maybe you, your model only pick like the first intent for the first query. But then you can like try to measure second metrics that we discussed here, like to measure the dispersion of the dispute, how much intent you are covering. So no, it's, a, it's an idea, like. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe another, uh, we, we had some, some, some questions about the user interface. And I think it's, it's also a very challenging task to uh, somehow mix or merge this uh, design UX uh, uh, UX tasks with our optimization uh, tasks because well if we talk when we talk about uh, metrics in DCG for example or P found uh, they are popular because they somehow quite good approximate the user's behavior. There is a model that users for example they uh, scan the results from top to bottom and when we talk about uh, uh, diversification and different intents and even if we can have these judgments for each pair of intent and document we uh, need to, uh, to solve a bit uh, a bit different task we, we need to uh, calculate uh, what's the probability that all the previously shown results uh, weren't su sufficient but the intent was right or a new intent we need and when we need or try different ways uh, of presenting the results, different ways of grouping what Andreas showed us or clustering or maybe some different size uh, that a product can occupy on this product result page. Then maybe these models will change. And it's, uh, well, I have no idea at all how to measure this, but it's, it would be great if we could uh, combine uh, some uh, interface decisions with some uh, optimization and uh, somehow judge and assess it what what uh, gets what we get in the results yeah thanks um, one thought one question from Renee that I think is interesting is and I'll try to summarize summarize it is I think it's a lot of approaches that I've seen for diversity, and I think some of the things you guys have presented, rely on the distribution of, say, categories in the index or how the index is represented. 
Uh, we've also talked a little bit about how uh, diversification really is trying to get at multiple possible senses of the user's intent. And I wonder if maybe there's a mismatch there and if there's anything we can do about that. Like maybe we should be reaching and tracking for what the user's intent are and asking, sort of asking the question, are we correctly capturing the probability of their intention given what we know about the keyword and the user? I, I just quite quite shortly want, want to start because, well, maybe I, I expressed my idea wrong. I, I saw Renee's question. Uh, from my point of view, uh, the uh, amount of items uh, allocated to one assigned one category in the database, in the product base, has nothing to do with calculating the intents of the users. So when they don't match, it's a signal uh, that something is wrong <laughs> in this database. We can't force the user uh, just buy some, some sorts of uh, goods just because we have a lot of them uh, in the store available uh, when one to so it's just when, when we when we uh, talk about these distributions di distributions these are distributions uh, on the set of products that users already interacted with and yeah maybe maybe uh, hundred percent of this category maybe one percent uh, can be uh, uh, different so oh. Yeah, uh, my thoughts on that, uh, I have maybe two uh, ideas. Like uh, when, uh, for example, let's assume for the first idea is that you have a steward criteria to kind of cluster the documents, not necessarily the category. But I agree that if you do it like a did for dot complete, it's only the perspective of the demand, but uh, what you can offer actually to, to the user. Like what if like we can derive this, the similar distribution for the click distribution and you believe that you'll see that what users search more for less you can make be di distributed your items to fall into this category right? you have a higher probability that's the higher click it category and then you uh, assign to that and uh, another one another thing that is like uh, from uh, i've been searching about it is like from web search they try to do that with a bunch of algorithms there was one special algorithm that I, I had the chance uh, to work in Get Your Guide with Ashraf. Uh, and we basically is called MMR, is marginal, uh, maximal marginal relevance. You have your relevance and you find the second score that measure how, how different you are from where you pick it, right? And there, one of the iterations that we did, the first one, yeah, we lie on the categories, but the second one, we use it more like this. Which well, like there was like multiple dimensions, right? So basically, you have a CD ad, and then you get the second one, the most relevant one, and then you measure how similar this item this is from the first one using more like this, yeah. uh, which like a multi-dimension like a similarity uh, metric. So it worked for it was interesting, and you measure the coverage later, and we had the uh, really diverse results doing that. Oh, cool approach. Yeah, I, I mean, I, we, we, we've never went uh, alive with something. Um, we didn't have a customer that does something like that. Um, I was just spotting gaps in the data uh, and there was no clear uh, explanation for that. And uh, the idea of, let's say, row-based groupings and rankings essentially came to my mind when I saw how Netflix and uh, and other streaming uh, people are doing that because there you have a lot of different intents and you have limited space on the screen and there you really need to diversify and and diversify in a lot of different areas so it can be the the, the genre it can be uh, um, um, by by maybe interesting uh, actors that, um, because i'm always um, looking the, the the same actors and and uh, I mean, they prove that these systems are superior to, let's say, normal relevance-based um, um, algorithms. Uh, but we have to prove uh, that for, for e-commerce, uh, I would say. I mean, I know that uh, Amazon is already doing it for some pages. I don't know how they do it, but I know that they are doing it. 
um, yeah, let's let's try it. I mean, now we have the tools to do it, and let's try it uh, and see if it's a success or not. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, one, I think Tito made a series of really interesting points just now in the uh, in the in the Slack um, where he mentions sort of user specific goals in the context of a query and you have some domains. I mean, we're all we're primarily focused on e-commerce now, but there are some domains sometimes even within e-commerce where uh, it's there are some there are some domains where it's the focus is really like serendipity and sometimes giving users things they didn't know they expected. And there are other domains where the problem is much more about sort of a notion of comprehensiveness relative to the query. Um, and I'd be curious to what extent, uh, and for example, research might be a, a domain like that, and maybe also e-commerce. I'd be curious to what extent diversity strategies need to change to handle different, maybe ultimate goals that diversity uh, might, might serve, or if there's maybe even sub problems within diversity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, one that was already being pointed out is um, the, the time dimension. So a, a word can have a completely different context um, when time goes by. Um, I saw this a couple of times in the data as well, where um, let's say when, when Ice Age came out, Ice before, it was always clear what you have to serve. And then people were just searching for Ice. And, and nobody was really clicking on ice anymore. They all, all wanted to see ice age on top. I mean, without exploration or, I mean, the, the, the kind of using user feedback. So when they reformulate stuff, they don't find what they, are, uh, they were looking for um, and then do something. So when you capture the whole session, that's nothing else in my opinion that, uh, than, than exploration. But it's the hard way because how many percent of, of your users will will be gentle enough to do these kind of things. Um, a lot of them will just uh, bounce off and, and you will potentially never see them. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot uh, to cover, a lot uh, ground to cover. And even Google doesn't do a, a perfect job there yet. Always space for, for improvements and new opportunities. Yeah, well, I, I just wanted to add that uh, even during our session, if we try to answer or discuss some questions about evaluation, we always limit this uh, diversity to one dimension because, well, it's already something new. And what uh, Andy said is important that not just we have multiple dimensions to diversify, but we understand that uh, all these distributions of parameters, their values, even if we calculate them not on the uh, product base, but on the products um, uh, that users interacted with, they're conditional. So, well, uh, maybe just like with the color, if you are looking for a blue mountain bike, maybe blue won't be that important for you. And even if we look at all the bikes that were bought after someone looked for blue bikes, maybe uh, we can understand whether this particular parameter, this particular value that you explicitly asked for, is that important or not? And with brands, yeah, and so well, it, it can be really complicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the tricky part as well. Because if you go to the like, web search research, there was this MMR, this animation, a bunch of other algorithms. But they assume that like uh, the pro processing, of course, of reading a document is, is like easier than like about something. And then when you want to uh, choose between one document to another, it's like uh, and if it's maybe you have more information. So it's just you know that something is different, and you're going to skip it. And then they they optimize for avoid the redundancy. But when you talk about like e-commerce, for example, we need some redundancy to compare. So I think that that's the trickiest part. But I believe in the both cases, like web search, and then you can consider like uh, diverse as investment. Like we, we, sometimes you have to invest, like you sacrifice to maybe like don't put your all your bags uh, or, or eggs <laughs> in the same basket. Like if you like you try to diversify too 
minimize the loss because if you have multiple interpretations, if you have like uh, different baskets to put your eggs, you maximize your chance to be successful. Uh, and then maybe it can back to that uh, spectrum. As the moment you find out this, you maybe can exploit and uh, solve this problem. Yeah, thanks. I, I think it's really interesting that, um, you know, when I think about this problem, it, it seems to be almost this, uh, this when we encounter a, a keyword, almost this first question, we can't, we can't assume we have more than a keyword, for example, in search, or when we do have more than a keyword, we have to be really gentle with how we use it. Um, and it almost feels like in search, and this has been true, just focused purely on a relevance problem, we have to look at a keyword and think, you know, what is the what is the intention behind this query? And I think historically we've we've maybe thought of that as one intention, like I will steer you in this one direction because I think you want a mountain bike that is blue and I will give you everything in that category and I will rank somehow. <clears throat> but it feels like, and I'd be curious what you guys think, this uh, this topic of diversity is, is also about this, maybe that first block when you encounter the keywords of, of intention, but really instead of a single answer, we get a probability distribution back. And then with depending on each little, maybe each each of those intentions, however we model that, which is very domain specific and challenging, we almost have in there a relevance problem. So it's it's almost like uh, relevance yeah. is the thing happening within each intention and diversification is the thing that that, that probability distribution where we have to somehow grasp at all the possible intentions. Yeah, that's definitely the case. There are uh, a lot of a lot of uh, examples for that. Like, I have this 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 uh, cool example, in my opinion, in the fashion industry. So we we saw quite um, um, some traffic on um, red Valentino dress. And we've, we, we, we saw the, how the KPIs were, were moving and it wasn't particularly well. And then I explored that um, there, this is ambiguous because the user might, might search for a red dress from Valentino, but there is also a sub-brand of Valentino, which is called Red Valentino. And, and so it, the, this red doesn't really need to be a color. It could also be um, related to a label. And, I, I, we shouldn't just pre-filter or make a judgment out of it um, um, if the if the distribution is not clear for us. So give the user both results, or or make make clear that we are not sure that we group the result in 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 both uh, or in two sections, and then by by clicking uh, e, um, he can easily uh, um, yeah do what he wants, and, and and get what he wants. I should say we're about out of time, so I think this is a a good. Final thought, uh, if Lev and Felipe, if you want to, on this sort of this notion, uh, if you guys have any final thoughts on diversity or diversity related to this distribution yeah. of intents. Uh, I have one, one final thought. Like, uh, yeah, I think it, it agree with the division. Like you have multiple combinations that you can drive. And uh, just would like to finish as like, maybe related to this, can also bring in all discussions. Like there was this paper that Henry shared with us, like when he started this conversation about Spotify and then how he's trying to diversify. Uh, and it's very interesting because for them it was almost like that. Like they 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 kind of have a nice paper, awesome paper, shows that like users that the users that have more diverse, they call generalist uh, music tasting, they have a better retention. And uh, and they they map it like each user and their taste as like uh, in the vector space, and that's multiple. That, that's not like this because when you a uh, user is a specialist, it's concentrate, and then everything is there. Had the only way one way to kind of like recommend stuff for them, and their algorithms look very good, much better for the generalists. But when they compare over time, over time, if one year, two years, I think they went through back past two years. Users who had a more general taste, like the, the, the vectors are more different, like the song song vectors and the, this taste, user taste vector, they have a better retention. 
So I think uh, it's this kind of investment stuff that I mentioned. I think it's a paid investment, like for long term, like at least for Spotify, diversify the diversify results, like uh, re uh, make the users uh, use more of the platform. I just wanted to add that from my perspective, it's nothing new. We have the same old tasks. We need to increase conversion rate and sales and diversification can help. Uh, but yeah, we go deeper and uh, we model maybe different the user's behavior and speaking about metrics, if we uh, come to next level, if we can track the conversion rate in terms of users, if we understand that there are super sessions, uh, like uh, Andy already mentioned that some types of products you can choose for uh, weeks and maybe months. And when you can add the information about the experience with the product, whether the user was satisfied or not. So, well, huge amount of data, but this modeling uh, makes sense. If we manage to do it, the results and in our interaction and in our communication with the users will, will be better. Yeah, thank you. This has been a really interesting panel. I really appreciate uh, Felipe, uh, Andreas, and, and Lev. Thanks so much for, for your talks and your insights. So.